Look how good this pie is! This is the ultimate cherry pie. If you're anything like me, anything worth doing is worth overdoing, including cherry pie and how much you eat of it. A crust that's actually crusty. Over the top cherry flavor. So much cherries with just the right amount of cherry goodness to stick them together. We're gonna teach you how to make the best cherry pie you've ever had. It's the ultimate cherry pie. Matthew's been working on the ultimate cherry pie and right here we've got very typical cherry pie filling and cans. We'll get into what they are and why they are what they are. But first, we gotta talk about regular cherry pie. This is where the complaining starts or the inspection. You can decide right off the bat, not enough crust. It's soft, so it's not crusty. That's a problem, the crust isn't crusty. There's not enough of it for me. I'm trying to think of a crust that's comparable. It's more just soft doughy. I think the crust is undercooked and I think the filling's overcooked. The crust could be crustier, it could have more flavor, it could have more cherry flavor, and it could have more cherries too. So here's our ultimate cherry pie. It smells good. <laughs> I wanna cut into it. One of the things with our ultimate recipes, we're just trying to like help you make a leveled up version of the things you already love. If you're not into crust, you're watching the wrong video. You can tell it's flakier. Lots of, lots of texture from the edge to edge, really bright. There's a ton of cherries. You can see how dark it is underneath. That looks amazing, dude. Everything from how to make the crust well, how to roll it out, the perfect cherry filling, how to level up the texture of the cherry filling, some techniques that are really key to bringing it all together, like a really good breaking profile in any oven you have, because this is an amazing freaking pie. Okay, so to make a good pie, we need a good pie dough. The food processor is a little quicker and it disperses everything very evenly. We wanna make a mealy pie dough or a mealy crust. Mealy, coarse, granular, these are all characteristics of what the crust is going to look like in its first stages. So a flaky pie dough has larger chunks of butter that's layered in between the dough. A mealy dough or a coarse dough, the grains of butter are a lot smaller and so it appears to be mealy or coarse crumb. It creates a stable, base layer for a wet filling when you bake from raw pie dough. I'm gonna start with a bread flour, a high protein flour, it gives us more structure. And we're gonna season everything with salt and it's important to keep everything cold as we go. So we've got cold butter that we've cubed up. We're gonna pulse this mixture to break down the butter into smaller pieces so it looks like a ground oatmeal. The butter, if they're not flakes, they're in small little pieces. So this is uh, as far as I wanna go here. We're gonna keep everything cold with ice water. It's pretty classic. This recipe is dialed in. You shouldn't need any extra, any less. Then we're gonna add this right around the edge of the food processor bowl so it helps to disperse evenly. Then we're gonna go back to our pulsing. We're gonna do about 10 quicker bursts this time. We're not gonna make a dough yet. We're just gonna bring it together and disperse the liquid. So it definitely looks like a, a coarse meal. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna bring it together. This is a little bit different method than our other pie doughs on the website, the flaky pie dough and the, the perfect pie dough and the pot brise. So I like to press this out and give it a little bit of a layering, just like we do in our perfect pie dough. Then we're gonna bring it together, gently pressing it into a log. I'm gonna divide this evenly into two portions, top and bottom crust. So if you wanna be official, you can bring back the scale, 402, 406. I'm, I'm happy with that. Then you're gonna make a disc. I'm gonna wrap this in plastic and give it a nice chill. Minimum of four hours, ideally overnight. So there's how you make mealy pie dough. Good for cherry pie, but also good for any other fruit pie that you wanna make from raw pie dough. We're gonna roll out the top crust and the bottom crust, but we need to put the bottom crust into a certain type of pan. I always recommend a metal pan. You can try a ceramic or a glass. Heat just doesn't transfer as well. We wanna roll out the, the top circle to be 12 inches. This pie pan is 10. We need a little bit of a, an overhang so we can fold in and make that, that crust. It's been chilling overnight is best. Like I said, minimum four hours. Got to keep everything cold. Lightly flour the bench, dust the top, start around the edge with my thumbs pressing in to make it more into a circle. This also kind of softens it up a little bit. 
makes it more malleable to roll it out. Flip it over, do the same process all the way around the rim. Some people like to pound their dough. You can do that. I like to press it out in a nice circle first. Creating a circle, we wanna always roll up and down direction, and then we're gonna rotate 45 degrees, roll it out, rotate another 45 degrees. If you find that it sticks a little bit on the counter, just give it a little bit more dust of flour. And it's important to apply even pressure so that you don't have one side that's too thin and one side that's too thick. This will be for our, our top, and you can just follow the edge there. A parchment line sheet tray, because we're gonna chill this, and then we're gonna form our bottom crust. Place it in the pan, find your center, drape her over the edge, then we're gonna press gently down. We're gonna go right into the corners, gently, picking up, pulling into the corners, Okay, so you've got your bottom shell formed in the metal pie pan. You've got your top crust already cut into a perfect 12 inch circle. We're gonna chill this, and then while we chill it, we're gonna make our filling. So there we go. You can use fresh cherries. It would take about this many fresh cherries. Stem them, pit them. We're gonna be using frozen pie cherries. We're also gonna add some cherry juice. We're also gonna use some lemon juice to boost the flavor. We're gonna use clear gel to thicken the pie filling. You can use it for other things like thickening gravies and sauces. The thing about this clear gel is creating the right ratio of cherries to filling. And the goo factor is gonna come from our sugar, juice, and gel that we cook. We're gonna start off by putting our dry ingredients into the pot and disperse them evenly. The malic acid heightens flavor but also keeps it very bright and red. Mix them well till they look very well incorporated. We're gonna add the cherry juice and the lemon juice. So we're basically creating a slurry at this point. Now, if you use regular cornstarch, it's not as stable as clear gel. It's not as clear. It turns out to be a little bit cloudier. All right, so once we have that mixture, smooth slurry, no chunks, no lumps, we're gonna start cooking it. About a medium high. It's gonna take about three to five minutes depending on the heat that you apply. Stirring in the very beginning is very important. And now the starch is hydrating, start to thicken here. We're gonna boil this for about 30 seconds to a minute. All right, that's what we're looking for. Thickened goop. What we've got here is a fully hydrated clear gel. It's thickened and it's definitely goopy. So we're gonna take our clear gel filling and we're gonna marry it with our frozen cherries. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna trim the edge off. We're gonna trim it flush with the pie dough pan. We're gonna egg wash just the edge, just enough to make it stick. If you put too much egg wash, it slips. And we're gonna pop in our filling. Don't think you can fit any more filling in here than what we have. Now we're gonna take this top, get it as center as you can, but I just kind of walk my fingers around. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick this up. So we've got the dough on the bottom. We're gonna fold this over and press it in like that. Once it's all the way around, we're gonna go ahead and go back and just pinch all the way. Make sure it's completely sealed. And once you make one rotation, I go back again and make a little peak. Now for crimping, you can use a fork. I like to use my, my thumb and fingers, just like this. And I'll take the other thumb and press it in like so. We'll just walk around. So crimping the edge is aesthetic, but it also helps to seal even more. So we're gonna score some vents. Otherwise, it'll find its own vent and blow out the side. And then I'm gonna go in between those lines, a little bit smaller score. You can top the pie with some coarse sugar and give it a little tilt so I get into the little corners. And we're just gonna pop this in the cooler while we wait for that oven to preheat. Perfect pie starts with a good oven. We wanna position the rack to the very bottom position. We want that heat to go through the bottom pan, through the crust, and up through the filling, and then finish on the top. But this rim is exposed. It doesn't have anything to insulate it from that high heat that we need in the very beginning. So we're gonna create a shield to go around the edge or the crust rim. So one of the common mistakes when baking pies is really not baking long enough. 
that's one common mistake. Second one is temperature. If you don't have a high enough temperature in the beginning to set the crust, the crust will never be crusty or bake. The third common mistake I would say would be oven position. All home ovens bake from the bottom. They don't have any top element other than a broiler. So when you're baking, baking happens from the bottom. Stored energy is stored in the walls and the floor and the top of the oven. And it bakes from the oven into the pie. I modified our countertop air fryer oven. So I put a baking steel at the bottom. It has a little moat to catch any butter drippage. It adds extra stored radiant heat. Now you can also buy a Juul connected oven. And we have this great cherry pie recipe that's all dialed in. You just make the pie like this. You load it in the oven and you hit go. And it goes through an autopilot cycle. Okay, so we've baked our pie at a high temperature to set the crust. We've reduced the temperature. Now we're gonna remove the shield and then continue to bake until it's nice and golden brown. So we've got some puff. That's what you're looking for. You can turn the fan on and toggle the fan on and off, maybe 10 minutes, turn it off 10 minutes, and that will really help to set the top crust. Another 40 minutes or so till it's completely golden brown. So our pie is baked. It's golden brown, it smells delicious, but you gotta wait to slice into it because it's wicked hot. I recommend cooling it at least four hours and then you can slice into it and enjoy it with some ice cream. And there you have it, cherry pie. The crust is actually crusty. There's a lot of it. The filling is maximum cherries, maximum cherry flavor. It's just bright. It's amazing. That's the ultimate cherry pie. I hope you learned a lot. Go buy the oven and support Chef Steps and make cherry pie like the recipe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you at Chef Steps. Ah. Why do you keep putting me in these situations? All right. Can we like make some healthy food?